And we have been following the fallout from one of the darkest days in American history. Thousands of Trump supporters stormed, ransacked, and looted the Capitol building yesterday as Congress met to count the electoral votes of our free and fair presidential election. Some of those rioters scaled the walls, flooding the hallways and vandalizing the Capitol. Members of Congress were forced to barricade themselves in the House chamber as Capitol Police protected them, guns drawn. Take a look at this. Before and after, the Capitol four years ago on Inauguration Day and yesterday after it was breached. After hours of delay, a defiant Congress reconvened. And they continued the vote count. And early this morning, Vice President Pence confirmed Joe Biden's victory. Now a growing number of lawmakers are calling for Trump to be impeached or for the cabinet to invoke the 25th Amendment. Here's Democratic Senator Chris Coons on GMA3 today. Um, the way that he has led, the way that he has conducted himself, has slowly and gradually built to what happened yesterday. So if the leadership of the Republican Party, the leadership of the Trump administration, his cabinet, his vice president, don't see this as a moment of very clear and present danger, then I don't know what the 25th Amendment is for. Now, at least eight Trump administration officials have now announced their resignation. And in the wake of the assault on the Capitol, the National Guard has been called in. Thousands more guardsmen will be deployed by the weekend. And a seven-foot fence is being set up around the Capitol to help keep the area secure for at least the next 30 days. And meanwhile, President Trump is in the White House today, but you won't find him on social media. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg said today that his Facebook and Instagram accounts, Trump's, have been suspended indefinitely, at least for the next two weeks until, quote, the peaceful transition of power is complete. The president's Twitter account has also been temporarily locked. So this unprecedented assault on the nation's capital is unfolding less than two weeks from January 20th, the day that Joe Biden will be sworn in as the 46th president of the United States. Our Faith Abube has the latest from Washington. Just before four o'clock this morning. The chair declares the joint session dissolved. Vice President Mike Pence announcing the results of the Electoral College vote count, closing out what should have been a ceremonial joint session on a day marred by mob violence at the Capitol. It took a riot by thousands of Trump supporters storming the U.S. Capitol for Congress to finally come together and officially certify Joe Biden as the next president. Hordes of angry Trump supporters easily breaching barricades, even appearing to get some help from some members of the Capitol Hill police. Rioters quickly overwhelming police and seizing the halls of Congress. Congressional leaders and the vice president whisked away. Others left to take shelter in the room, diving under desks. Obviously, we were concerned. I never thought I'd ever see this um, in the United States. In the Senate, one rioter reaching the podium and on the other side of the Capitol, another posed with his boots on Speaker Nancy Pelosi's desk. Police also say they recovered two pipe bombs near the scene. A state of emergency declared. The sources tell ABC News the president initially rebuffed efforts to bring in the National Guard until aides finally convinced him. The demonstration is turning deadly. At least four people died three from medical emergencies and one woman shot by Capitol Hill police. We're going to walk down to the Capitol because you'll never take back our country with weakness. More than three hours after the violent attack began, the president posting a video praising his followers and asking them to go home, but not before repeating the false claim that the election was stolen. Critics say those claims often repeated by Trump's Republican allies in Congress contributed to the violence. I criticize our, some of our public leaders for raising this false expectation that Congress was going to somehow reverse uh, this election. That attack today, it didn't materialize out of nowhere. It was inspired by lies. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.